to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Comes from the Latin word doctrina. It means a preset body of truth already programmed to make you become something specific. Hallelujah. But that's not really where I'm going tonight. We're discussing the subject of strength. If you are looking for a title tonight, maybe let's, let's give the conference a title so that we can have it arranged. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. That's where we're going to get our title if it is possible say by tomorrow if the media team can help us so that okay beautiful we have this now god bless you i was about to say that that if they can help us so that it can help to save time media projection helps a lot to conserve time it's not to make you ignore your bible it's just to help redeem time are we together ready to read ephesians chapter 6 now look up please keep that scripture there theologically speaking this was Paul in Ephesus and he began to help mature the believers. It was part of his apostolic ministry to travel from region to region and supervise the spiritual growth in partnership with the Holy Spirit to see how far the believers were faring. And if he detected that there were gaps in their spiritual growth, he would organize a conference and bring balance to those areas. So you notice that he did not go with preset sermons. He looked at the needs of the territory and created sermons out of those needs. That is a true representation of a, an apostolic grace. And so if he went to Corinth, he saw that there was such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But there was carelessness, there was lawlessness. People were taking some of those wine and they were getting tipsy. There was misbehavior. People would just get up and prophesy anyhow. And he said, no, 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 no. He called a conference. He said, there are things I need to explain to you. To the end that all things be done decently and in order. That's what brought the book of Corinthians. First and second Corinthians. Are we together? When we get to the, uh, um, what do we call it now? Ephesians. He met the church in Ephesus. And these were people who were not ignorant people at all. And then he began to teach them. When you read chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, he began to teach them what we call their positional advantage. The realities that have come to the believer on account of his being grafted through Christ. Through this mystery of the new birth, he began to help them understand the implication of being recipients of the life of God. How that Christ was raised up and then that we have together with him been raised and made to sit far above thrones, dominions and so on and so forth. Then he now began to teach believers their work of faith, the character and the attributes that justifies being a recipient of this life. He's saying that if you are truly a recipient of eternal life, there are implications to it. We should see it in your lifestyle, the manifestation of character that reflects Christ in reality. And then he now teaches them the subject of warfare. And he helps them understand that, ladies and gentlemen, in as much as you are Christians, there is the revelation of your positional advantage. There is your work of faith. But you need to know how to stand and defend yourself. And here's how he puts it. 6 verse 10. Finally, now I'm concluding my conference, he says. My brethren. He was speaking to a people who had been used to listening to him. They had submitted themselves for mentorship and growth and development. My 
brethren and then he says and this is where we get our title for this conference be strong in the lord be strong in the lord he says and then in the power of his might just keep that scripture we're only considering verse 10 for tonight the instruction is be strong in the lord you can call tonight part one be strong in the lord part one he's teaching them how to be strong is there a possibility of getting amplified can we project amplified otherwise i can i can easily search for that from my 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 um i wish we can get the amplified expression of this to project it be strong in the lord let me just look let me just bring it here because my teaching will require Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 Amplified says in conclusion by the way I don't know if it's too early to do this and please do not find it offensive let me encourage every church and every man of God here in as much as we desire and those who all who are part of the media team of every ministry it is very easy to be able to get the tools to help your preacher preach well are we together don't be offended but it's to encourage you there are softwares and they are most of them are absolutely free all you need to do is encourage your media team to just meet a few people who have gotten the job well done you can send one of the people for training this is why we love the body of christ there are people who are excellent as far as media presentation is concerned you can send one of your people to go there and just learn you can see something as simple as having an amplified rendition you see it makes teaching very effective and it, it doesn't really cost money it's just honor to those that god has already helped so that you can bring them so i think i challenge everyone here who is part of the media of any ministry don't sit down and limit the capacity of that ministry because of pride or it must be through us open up your heart just one 10 15 minutes training and a software is given the same laptop the same gadget and you can now have very superior projections so i expect the media team those who are part of this please after service this night take it as an assignment go and look for the software there are individuals seated here some of you are exceptional some of you while sitting here in 10 minutes you can get this job done so please look for those people humble yourself and let them help you i am i am part of you this is family discussion so don't feel embarrassed are we together so that we continue to upgrade on the level of excellence let's not keep praying and falling down and then misrepresenting the the excellence that this region is known for we can be able to step up so whoever heads the media and some of you who are here if you can help listen to me whether you are in the committee or not after the grace if you can help please walk up to reverend dan they will lead you to the media people just help them let's set this up so that we can have this it will beautify the house it will help in efficiency of teaching and it will ultimately glorify the name of the lord if you're in agreement with me say amen, amen. right generally speaking is a lesson i want you to learn anything you do not know don't be ashamed of outsourcing it don't wait until it comes to meet you just humble yourself most of the things we need for the next level they don't need money they only need honor just acknowledge that i may not know this and you can go and learn from a pastor from a church and many people who know are open to teach but not everybody they teach people who are ready to learn are we together so let's get back to our discussion ephesians chapter 3 let me read from amplified here here's what it says in conclusion be strong in the lord draw your strength from him and be empowered to your union with him that was what i wanted you all to see this is how amplified puts it be strong in the lord 
draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might he says so the bible tells us that we can draw strength from our union with the lord the bible says we can be strong in the lord a believer can build capacity and become strong in the lord you can be strong in and through your human connection when you see a politician that is well connected you can say this man is a strong man oh, what you mean is that he has derived some level of stability by reason of his connection to humans and the bible says here that believers can be men of stature and capacity in the spirit and that the basis of that strength is their union with the lord are we blessed it is true that we can find strength the strength to do greater things the strength to walk in more superior spiritual dimensions the strength to be able to host heavier dimensions of god's glory god's mantle god's power but it is important for us to know how we obtain strength in this kingdom so if a gentleman gets born again that gentleman is now in christ but he must learn the spiritual dynamics of sustaining strength in the spirit so that after four or five years when you see that individual you can see stamina you can see stability when you give birth to a baby please look up many of you here are mothers when you give birth to a baby the reason why the baby is not able to walk and run and handle certain things is lack of strength is that true it would be unfair to ask a baby to lift this pulpit why the baby does not have the strength to do it even if you want to give that baby this the baby does not have the strength to do it no matter how wealthy you are even if you're a billionaire you cannot give a baby or a small child a truck or a luxurious bus and hand the key he does not even have the strength to maneuver the steering hallelujah are we together now strength there are certain levels of kingdom responsibility listen carefully there are certain prophetic responsibilities that are supposed to be carried out by you in destiny but the reason why those seasons have not been opened for you yet is because you do not have the strength there are certain levels of anointings that are supposed to have come upon you but god himself is withholding them why because the attacks that follow those anointings you don't have the strength to survive the attack so out of god's love he will withdraw it from you while you are praying and fasting and say more power god says no it is not more power you need it is more strength and stamina can you survive the attack because there are attacks that follow mantles not individuals if you carry elijah's mantle jezebel will follow you if you carry samson's mantle delilah will follow you delilah does not follow samson she follows whoever carries that mantle so it's not enough to just desire membership i want one thousand members ten thousand members do you understand the adversity that comes with that level of unction apostle i want to be a billionaire and i went to bed and i saw that i'm a billionaire blessing people do you know what it takes the criticism that comes with having that level of wealth and the discipline remaining morally pure with that level of resource do you know what it takes many people are praying for what they do not have the spiritual capacity to receive most times it's not that your prayer is not answered is that where the answer should come to is too small are we are we together tonight be strong in the lord apostle i want to receive an anointing and a grace for nations do you have the ability to remain healthy and strong as you travel from region to region preaching the gospel God will not give you an anointing for nations to preach only three times a year. You are joking. Not for that kind of anointing. 
Do you have the stamina to preach from conference to conference and yet not fall down and collapse? It takes more than physical energy. There is an energizing that is mysterious from heaven. It's called the spirit of might. Is someone learning, please? So the challenge many times is not that God does not want to release these levels of power and these levels of grace and these levels of prosperity. And it's not that what you are looking for is not in your destiny. It is true that you are a prophet. It is true that you are an apostle. But for a long time, the experiences that follow that office will never follow you. And I'm giving you the diagnosis tonight. Apostle, why have I been praying and it looks like God cannot trust me with this? If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. God has weighed you and found out that only 300 members can survive this level of capacity you have. If God should multiply that result by two, it would destroy you you do not have the spiritual capacity to remain humble, to remain diligent, to remain disciplined, to remain spiritual. And you do not have the spiritual capacity to ward off the arsenals of darkness within your territory. Because I tell you, every time you rise in the spirit, it's not only angels that see you demons to see you and they say who is this rising in Enugu follow this young boy let's not take him for granted uh, why is he praying every night he does not have a church yet he does not have a name yet but his consistency is sending a, a there is something why is this lady always interceding we that's how we took Esther for granted until she became queen who is this lady that would not give up being consistent help your wife there is a grace that is coming on that woman of god in the name of jesus christ say grace new wine new wine coming to her new wine by the spirit of the living god Hear me, there are many of you as it is now. The reason why God has refused to announce you is not because he does not want you to rise. You do not know the arsenals of darkness waiting. They have been suspecting that the, the end time general will come from Inugu. But where is he? And God hid you and said, keep praying. Keep serving in the ushering department. Keep serving in the ushering department. And yet your pride wants you to hold the mic. Help that lady, please. Keep serving. Keep serving. And God is saying, I am hiding you because you do not yet have the strength that being exposed requires. Man of God, there is a reason why God has hidden you. He's hiding you because oh Moses if Pharaoh knows you are the one they are killing children for they will kill you in Egypt before you become strong you have not yet met the God of the Bible who will give you strength so he will hide you he will hide you using service in the house of God you are called a prophet but God will say walk in the media for five years and while you are feeling insulted you do not know that is God hiding you an heir as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all an heir a man of god a prophet an apostle a businessman now hear me i want to give you a word of caution before we continue this is the reason why premature manifestation is dangerous because when god hides you so that pharaoh does not see you pride will make you believe i am too much for what god is saying i should do i can even preach more than the man of god who is preaching i have while he's preaching i'm seeing visions 
Why should I be cleaning chairs and you graduate yourself from the place of service to pride and expose yourself and in one year you go out of relevance? This is a danger. People start ministry and in two years, three years, the devil leaves them and they think they are all right. By the fourth year, an attack comes and just sweeps them like a tornado because the training that provides capacity to last, they did not stay with God. Can I tell you this? Dear co-laborers in the gospel, let us learn a lesson. Don't ordain and anoint people just because they are diligent and their gifts are working. Find out from God, do they have capacity to endure what they will be exposed to? Don't expose people just because they are loyal to you. Don't expose them just because they can preach. I know he can preach. Let him keep cleaning the chairs. God is hiding him. Look up, please. Many of you here watch football. There are footballers that when you are saving them for the final match, because that, that club site or that nation must win, even though they are professionals, you find out that the last two or three matches before the final match, they will keep them in the reserve. They will be itching to play, but they are hiding them. You know why? Because the coach knows that if anything should happen to this player before the final match, could that be why God is still hiding you? Because there is a battle coming. Hey, Matala said Could that be why God has stopped you from going on air? Could that be why God has said, sit down, just submit to authority and learn? Pray in the spirit for one minute. The entrance of your word Give it light and even understanding to the simple Hallelujah Please be seated. Please be seated. Even prophet Samuel was about to miss it when he saw Eliab. He said, surely the Lord's anointed. And God said, yes, stop that. That's not how I operate. Apostle, why should I not make the young man a pastor? He's sharp. He's intelligent. He's obedient. He prays every time you call for prayer. I think he's ready for ministry. Let me send him to go and start the other branch. And the Holy Ghost says, not so. Don't do that. He's saying, this young man you see comes from a family with spirits that destroy people when they rise. And he has not yet sustained the spiritual intelligence. Just because the devil has not attacked him yet is because those spirits are activated. The code of operation for those altars is that until you get to a certain level of height, if you have not gotten there, they will be silent. For 20 years, you will think you are free. You will keep rising. There is a level you get to here they come they brought your father down they brought your mother down so before you get there god says come oh samuel you will be a great prophet but let eli teach you something there is something eli has to teach you show us the ancient path Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to walk in the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Hear me. When God begins to hide you, even when you think you are qualified, I'm explaining to you what is happening in the spirit. It is true that you can preach. It is true that you can prophesy. 
but you do not yet know how the devil throws down great men so god is saying so that you will not become a bad testimony let me hide you until you attend this conference when you now know what it takes to survive i will lift you sometimes even overnight are we learning hmm. everybody says strength shout it say strength capacity do you know what it means to remain prayerful when you have ministrations every day do you know what it means to prepare for an average of three to five sermons per week and yet your spiritual life must remain alive and yet you must still manage family faithfully and yet you must manage your congregation faithfully everybody says strength do you know what it means to be praying for it, the sick here somebody has died in your church another person has gone through a tragedy and everybody is saying are you sure that this man is not using people for something and yet you still have the stamina to call upon the name of the lord say strength the man of god shared with you how that he was doing ministry for 13 years no foot of the womb and yet serving god faithfully let me tell you it takes more than a healthy psychology you need strength from the spirit especially when you are praying for others and they are getting that result do you still have the power to go to god in prayer and yet the discussion is not your need the discussion is lord your kingdom your kingdom come and you act as if you have no need everybody say strength let me show you a mystery tonight and then we'll pray isaiah chapter 40 we're discussing the subject of strength i want to show you a mystery how men contact strength and ascendance in the spirit if you find and you learn this secret believe me you will continue to rise in power in power isaiah chapter 40 hmm. more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life that must be your prayer in this conference i want more love more power more of you in my life not just more members not just more fame more love more power more of you in my life strength stamina capacity isaiah 40 from verse 28 Isaiah 40, 4, 0, verse 28. It says, Hast thou not heard, hast thou not known, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not, neither is he weary there is no searching of his understanding so he's giving you an information in case you have not heard it he's saying there is a god who does not faint he is not weary so we are about to study by what technology has he provided that the, the saints just like him can remain strong and not be weary he's saying god does not have the possibility of weakness and fainting and there is an understanding that sponsors that result next verse it says 
He giveth power. What does he give those who faint? He does not give them an advice. He does not give them an information. When you find your fridge vibrating and it looks like it's shaking and making noise, you know that the current, the voltage is low. Is that true? And many times you may need to outsource power and switch on the gen and you find out everything is wrong. There are symptoms of lack of strength in the spirit. I will show you. You can know that your strength is depleting. There are indices like a patient. There are symptoms of malaria. There are symptoms of typhoid fever. You can know there are spiritual symptoms that show that strength is failing you. The Bible says in any case, God can give power to the faint and to them that have no might. What does he do? He increases strength. Someone say, increase my strength. Prophesy, say, Lord, increase my strength. Mm. To those who have no might, to preachers who have no might, to businessmen who have no might, he can increase your strength. Next verse. 30. It says, even the youth. Now, this is a very serious information. Don't forget what we are discussing. To be strong in the Lord. It says, even the youth shall faint. So fainting and weakness has nothing to do with backsliding. It is part of the human nature. And if you do not sustain the spiritual technology to remain strong, you may not backslide, but you will still lose strength. And you will not be able to do so much. That no matter who you are, no matter how much you love God, the tendency for weakness, the vicissitudes of life can beat you as a preacher, can beat you as a businessman, can beat you as a prophet and bring you to a point where even like Elijah and even like Jonah, you can ask for death. Even the youth shall faint and be weary the young men shall utterly fall. Now he begins to introduce us to a formula. 31. But they that wait upon the Lord. So if you will be strong in the Lord, you have to learn to wait upon the Lord. Don't assume you know what I'm talking about. They that wait upon the Lord, your assignment when you are weak your assignment when you see that you do not have capacity for the next level is not to continue god is saying if you ever find out that you have you, you, it looks like you don't have sermons again it looks like you all your prayer the miracles are recycled nothing new he's saying stop 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 every other thing you are doing is a sign that your strength is limited they that wait upon the Lord, whatever this means, the reward for doing it is number one. You shall renew your strength. Number three, that you will mount up with wings as the eagles. And by this technology, you will run. And when men are weary, you will not be weary. You will walk and yet not faint. So when you are still going after 20 years, 30 years in ministry, 35 years in ministry, 40 years, and people say, by what technology do you continue? You will tell them, I learned something about the human nature, that all men can be weak, all men can be weary, all men can faint. But if I master the art of waiting, you will never see an equation of fainting in my life. It does not mean I cannot faint. It means every time that season is coming, I know how to jump it by the mystery of waiting. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength when yours is weak. Draw your strength from your union with him. So the Bible gives us waiting as a secret. 
But what is the implication of waiting? Because for many of us, we think waiting is fasting. When you are fasting, you say, I am waiting upon the Lord. Fasting is part of the activities that might be captured in waiting. But what exactly does it mean to wait upon the Lord? Everybody say waiting. <laughs> I love the Bible. The wisdom that comes from this truth is able to change. The Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. For you to understand what it means to wait upon the Lord, there is one spiritual law that I want to teach you. It is called the law of submission. Listen. Let me show you what it means to wait upon the Lord. When you wait upon a man, how many of you have gone to restaurants where you find a group of well-dressed gentlemen, many times with white and black, is that true? And you see them stand, there is a name they are called. What are they called? Waiters. Thank you. What is their assignment in that restaurant? Not only to serve you, are we together now? But to ensure that you feel special, that you feel honored. So they are trained and they have built stamina to wait. Now let me tell you what a waiter does. He stands and remains at the door or at his assigned table. And the business people can come and sit down. And sometimes for 30 minutes they are talking. And he would dare not ask them any question. Can I begin to say, no, oh, no, 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 we're busy. And he keeps quiet and he stands there. We call him a waiter because he is able to stay. Sometimes they are engrossed in the discussion and for one hour, that man is staying there. Later on, you now call him and the business people will not even apologize for keeping him to stay that long. They will now say, what do you have? And after waiting for so long, they'll say, the only thing I need Go and get me a drink. I stayed for one hour not to push a tray, bring in sumptuous food to bring you a drink and they bring it with joy and drop it. And they wait for another one hour. And when the people are done drinking, sometimes they will stand up and look at that waiter and say, you've tried. And they can reach through their pocket. If and Jesus said, who taught you this? Where did you learn this? For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. Ah. So what is the key to having soldiers under you? You come under authority also. You want to tell one, go, and he goes. You want to tell one, come, and he comes. The key is that you must be under authority. And on the strength of that authority is a spiritual law. The law of submission is the law of strength. It's the law of capacity. You can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. It takes another to bring honor upon you. Let's learn. I am a man under authority, he says, having soldiers under me. And by reason of that authority, I now have the power to say to one, go, and he must go. I can say to another, come. So the power to say go, and the power to say come, the power to say go, demons, the power to say come, blessings, is hidden in authority. I can tell you why the demons don't go when you tell them go. I can tell you why the blessings don't come when you tell them come. Before they obey you, they verify. There is a verification system in the spirit. Please pay attention. Make sure you understand what I'm teaching you. Give me that scripture again, please. 
I say unto this man, go, and he goeth. To another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. In verse 10, when Jesus heard it, what happened to Jesus? He marveled. The Bible did not say he listened. He was listening to this man sharing a deep spiritual law. He marveled and he said unto him, unto them that followed, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I have not found this kind of faith. In the whole of Israel, I have searched for men. But I don't know what this man found. But indeed, he has found something. And when you read that same hour, Jesus did not even have to pray again. The man's understanding was enough faith to get his child back. The law of submission. He says, submit yourself to God. Hold on. <laughs> Submitting yourself to God is not giving your life to him. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Just because you gave your life to Jesus does not mean you have submitted to him. This is why many Christians keep quoting scriptures. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am in Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am the head and not the tail. And demons say, you have broken the law. We do not see submission. Jesus, I know he was under authority. Paul, I know he was under authority. But who are you? You don't have an identity in the spirit. Listen. Every time warriors were about to speak in the Bible, they would say, this person, the son of this, the son of this. When David wanted to fight Goliath, there was only one question King Saul asked him, whose son are you? I want to know what authority and what covenant operates under that authority. Then I can verify whether you can bring Goliath down. He didn't say who trained you. He didn't say, how long have you killed anything before? Whose son are you? When David stood before Goliath, Goliath said, you must be stupid for bringing this small boy to come and fight me. Am I a dog? And David said, Goliath, you come to me with your bow. You come to me with your spear. But I want you to look well in the realm of the spirit. I am under authority. You are in trouble. I come in the name of the Lord. You see the name again. The name. Hmm. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. You come to me with your bows. You come to me with your spheres. You come to me with your size. Goliath, I confess, I will be stupid in my own strength to come and stand before you. I'm a teenager, but I'm not a baby. I'm wise enough to know that physical strength for physical strength. I cannot match you. My assignment is to forerun the authority I represent and shift and allow you collide with the power of that authority. Now, please look up. Remember what we are dealing with. Be strong in the Lord, part one. I'm showing you how it means or what it means to be strong in the spirit. That the more your authority in the spirit, your submission to the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ is in place, the more you sustain the power to reflect him. Look up. How many of you know that the moon does not have light of its own? Do you know that? Is that true? But why does the moon shine so bright? I will tell you. The degree to which the moon aligns to the glory of the sun. In the night, you don't see the sun, but the sun is there. The sun steps back and allows you to appreciate the moon. The report card of the moon's alignment is revealed in the night. You don't know whether the moon is well aligned in the day. In the night, when there is darkness, 
the moon now reveals whether it used the day to align well. There are times that the moon aligns so well, you will even mistake the moon for sun in the night. So when you look at a man and the man looks like God, where did he get this kind of power? You speak and it happens like God. The man does not have power. It is because he submitted so diligently to this authority. You will almost mistake him for God. Is it not in your Bible where they saw Paul and Barnabas? They said, you are not human beings. They called them Zeus and Hermes. What kind of authority is this? And they poured their clothes. They said, we are men. It is just the God that we are submitted to. So therefore, when you find out that there is a limiting increase in membership, there is a limit in the dispensing of the miraculous. There is a limit in your access to power in the spirit. It is a report card. It means your submission needs to be increased the more. There are times that you look at the sun, the moon, and you think the moon is only half. The moon is always full, but it is the part of it that aligns to the sun. That is the part that shines. Any part of the moon that does not align with the sun, it does not shine. So all the various shapes of the moon we have, they are not the true shape of the moon. They are simply the shape of the alignment of the moon, not the moon. Look up, please. Every shape of the moon you have today, the various shapes, as slim as it can be, as midway it can be, that is a false shape of the moon. It is the disalignment of the moon that kept creating all those variations. Could it be that most of the error, the imbalances that come from the church, they are not a true reflection of the Holy Ghost. They are a reflection of the degree to which we aligned or otherwise. So if I preach correctly and then I start preaching another thing, it does not mean the Holy Ghost who is speaking to me is wrong. But like the moon, somewhere there is fault in my submission. I'm praying tonight that you will understand what I'm saying. And you will command power in this kingdom that will marvel you. When you see men and women who are powerful, my brothers and my sisters, it's not like they went and found a bottle of oil somewhere and just put it on their head and became powerful. No. Let me show you what it means to submit. Hmm. Submission to God is more than just acknowledging that there is God. Luke chapter 22. Let's start from verse 40. Luke chapter 22 from verse 40. Jesus, our pattern man, is about to reveal for us what it means the hallmark of submission and when the hour was come he sat down Luke 22 verse 40 40 40 40 Luke 22 verse 40 40 and when he was at the place look up please everybody he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and he knelt down and prayed. What was the content of his prayer? Saying, Abba, my source, my sustainer, my defender my authority i need power to be able to endure what i'm going through now it says if you are willing remove this cup from me this is my desire i don't want to have to go through the cross i've gone through enough shame i've gone through enough ridicule i've gone through enough embarrassment 
if it is left for me as a prayer request remove this cup from me this is the language of submission nevertheless not my will but yine be done nevertheless not my will but thine be done keep that scripture there please look at it very well ladies and gentlemen this sentence you see is what has been responsible for the superior strength of many people you admire today in the kingdom and lack of adherence to this law is responsible for the weakness and the fatality and a coronation service was held in honor of him because every time you hand over your will to god you may go down but you will still go back up notice the life of jesus is a lesson for us the bible says when jesus gave up his will the first place he went was down <laughs> you think that just because you give god your will when you say your will be done suddenly power comes you start going abroad it is costly to say your will be done because many times in the interim your life may seem to go down your will be done your will be done and god says for the next one year you are not going for any ministration again stay with me and you say god but the nations are just beginning to hear my voice he says you have a choice i gave you a free will you can use it and then you come back and say lord i confess that i love to preach the word but i love you more thy will be done lord left for me i will not be so stupid as to empty my account and give any church i have sense it took me five years to gather that money lord you gave me a brain and i've been using it very well i know what it means to save but i cannot pretend that it's not your voice i'm hearing therefore nevertheless thy will be done hmm. let me tell you this the hardest experience that you will ever have in your christian life is not persecution no the hardest experience you will ever have in ministry is not being misunderstood it's not um, all these things that no the hardest experience is the experience of laying down your will that is the real thing god is looking for you can lay down your offering you can lay down your reputation your will represents the epicenter of your relevance god says that's what i'm looking for your will your will represents your future your ability to make decisions outside of him you lay it on that altar and say lord i know you are sending me to be a man of god to the nations i am tired of demons principalities and powers fighting enugu state destroying destinies we keep organizing prayer conferences after prayer conference we only fall down we stand up but nothing happens in the territory demons still move as if they are not aware that there are preachers in a land i tell you what the demons are looking at before they obey you like the sun and the moon they check i said don't mind him let them keep organizing their conferences but when they find a people the moment they see you go down on your knees they say what is happening pay attention who is that what is he doing and you place that wheel and say lord it is what you want not just what i want and while you are doing it the devil and even preachers will make you look stupid and say god gave you brain my friend take wise decisions and he said lord i have a choice but i've taken that power to choose and i laid it down what do you want for my life and the realm of the spirit will salute you and say who is this one walking in wisdom you have mastered the key to accessing power in that state of submission god will say now that you have bowed down to me arise and go to enugu state go and tell them 
there is a God who can heal. Go and tell them there is a God who can deliver. Go and tell them there is a God who can save. Yes, Lord. You organize a crusade and just when they thought it was the same Moses who left Egypt, they do not know that this one has met the God of the Bible. And you stand and say in the name of Jesus and the register is checked, demons see it. And in the name of Jesus, you begin to see miracles. You will shift the climate of a territory single-handedly. Where did you come from? I came from a place of authority and strength to submission. And just when men are celebrating you and saying you are the next voice we're celebrating, God can tell you in the middle of a powerful crusade, with honorariums waiting for you he says for the next three weeks let no man see your face i need to spend time with you at that point your fame versus your obedience and the devil says are you going to allow your fame to go to the ground like this man of god just when they are producing your pictures on posters is this how you want to disgrace yourself you have a choice remember jesus nevertheless and you go back to that secret place and god will tell you compared to where i'm taking you to we just started the grace i gave you was a test to see if in the presence of fame you will still return back and you can return back and say lord they may call me their man of god but i am still your boy your authority is still where i am and he says let's go the flight for the next dimension and you keep seeing these people open up layers and levels of glory the secret is submission so when the bible says they that wait upon the lord he does not just mean they that fast he does not just mean they that pray fasting and prayer are only tools that help to engender your submission if at the end of that fasting and that prayer you are still full of yourself lord your colleague in ministry is here i just wanted to tap a little power so that i go and continue my thing god will say nonsense finish your fast and go and eat and continue your cycle of frustration in ministry hear me i just shared with you the life of this man standing before you the secret to all that you see all that you hear is not in any power that is derived in myself per se the signs and wonders the word of god the honor that he's given access to kings and systems and structures i can tell you the secret the secret is submit yourself before the authority of God there is absolutely nothing 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 I cannot give up when God speaks if the Lord asked me to drop this mic after this conference now and says there is no morning session tomorrow there is no evening session I will turn and apologize to everybody here and say I'm sorry please don't mistake it for pride but the master the one whose authority empowers what I'm doing has sent me. Every time you go to Pharaoh, Pharaoh will not say welcome. He will say who sent you. You must tell Pharaoh who sent you. He's not going to allow Israel go like that. Who sent you? Finally, brethren, be strong. finally preacher be strong in the lord finally prophet be strong in the lord there are still heights to scale there are still mountains to climb there are still marvelous things to do for the kingdom but you are weak be strong in the lord draw your strength from your submission man of god at this level of ministry is already killing you the financial burden the ministerial burden the diagnosis is that you aligned a little now go back and align properly 
and like the eagles you will rise and begin to command power with God where you will speak and what you say comes to pass you don't just speak because you are confessing you don't just say in Jesus name may the power of God taught you no God is not a genie that you use to conjure like a magician can I tell you this there are certain things that happen in this kingdom not because of power there are things that happen in this kingdom because of your positional advantage where you are located spiritually can birth possibilities more than just power there are things that happen and it is not a product of just power it is a product of the alignment that you have as far as God is concerned so every time the Lord brings me into a new season as I fast as I pray as I study scripture I don't just ask and say God give me more power sometimes honestly I could pray that but the real prayer is father I know that for as long as I am alive in myself they will not see you for as long as I am alive in myself they will not see you but for as long as I die to self through my submission to you they will continue to see you rise and the key is I if I be lifted up from the earth that earth is you if I be exalted I will draw all men to myself John chapter 3 and verse 30 John chapter 3 and verse 30 marvelous God everybody please read one two read he must increase but I must decrease. Decrease does not mean be irrelevant. Decrease does not mean get out of relevance. No. He must increase. It's another word for saying be magnified. I must decrease means may they not see me when they see you. <laughs> when they see me, may they see you exalted lifted may they not just see joshua selman i was born by a woman who my mother is still alive i still have pictures of when i was small don't be deceived by the man he must increase he must increase be lifted high be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, righteous and worthy, oh Lord. I submit to your authority so if I come for a meeting like this I don't come and dance into that vain pressure of trying to show I am anointed no I am here as one under authority Lord what would you have to be done in the meeting if the Lord says just preach share the grace and drop the mic no matter how much you have clapped for me to see signs and wonders I will preach drop the mic and go back and return I am more conscious of my submission than my reputation this is the secret to spiritual power many people have organized meetings that was not under authority they organize meetings because others were doing it and they say let us also build a city and make a name for ourselves and they did not have the backing that will follow it We hear that they are building branches. Let's build branches too. And God says, but I did not direct you. 
when I sent you, he says, lackest thou anything. Can I tell you this? You are not an authentic Christian just because you gave your life to Jesus. You have to get to a point in your life where you submit your will. It's all about you, Jesus. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God and I surrender. It's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you, it's for your glory and your fame, it's not about me, as if you should do things my way, you alone at God. A man who truly submits does not have plan B. There is no in case it fails. We die here. There is no I am trying you. Let me see. But there's one leg in and one leg out. In case you disappoint me. No. <laughs> no. 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 I show you the secret to power. Many of you have plan B. There is a harbor list somewhere. Let's try Jesus. If you fail, I will still be coming to church. Politicians, you are a politician here. Pay attention. This is why many people do not secure the power of God. They submit to God and submit to something else. When you submit to him for supplies... In reality, your eye is looking at one billionaire uncle. So on one hand, you are saying, Lord, you are the only provider. But somewhere you are eyeing the uncle. So when we say in the name of Jesus, may God favor you. You are saying amen with respect to the rich man you know. And God says, you are not ready for my power. Take it higher for me. Ladies and gentlemen. I have learned this with God. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you this. I have no agenda looking for anything for myself. Everything you see today, I travel left, right and center for months. I have been back to back with meetings with no time to rest. Why do I do this? Fame? No. There are easier ways to look for fame. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you will do what you do. We need a move. We need a move. I am here for you. Come and do what you do. I am here for you. Come and do what you do. Set my heart on you, so you will do what you do. We need a move. We need a move. Enugu State, hear me. It is not because the charms and the native doctors are so powerful. It's not because the covenants are hundreds of years old that families cannot be liberated. It is not because God is so powerless 
that in spite of church services, I show you why many are unable to dislodge the altars that have kept men down. There is a problem with our submission. We are only using ministry as a tool to do whatever we want to do. And so we just quickly run to God with the show of spirituality. But then our hearts are on ourselves, our businesses, our education. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, it says. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him means admit that without him you can do nothing, he says. It is the abiding principle. I'll teach you that tomorrow. Please don't miss any of the sessions. He that abides in me and I in him, it tells you the same will bear fruit. Hear me, men of God, business people. Many of you have come for this conference expecting encounters. Many of you have come for an upgrade in power and grace. It will not just happen by impartation. You have been preaching from your manual and your intelligence. Now submit to the wisdom of the rabbi and watch what begins to come out from you. You want the anointing. It's not because a man of God stretched his hand and you do say, no. It's not by copying. It's by submission. But I assure you, even tonight, that if you are willing to submit, do you know what it means to submit? To take away all that agenda and say, Lord, whatever you say is final. Whatever you say is final. I love what you love. I hate what you hate. My entire life revolves around your will. You have signed in for strength and for power. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life has changed. Prayer point number one. Lord, I lay aside everything. I lay it down. Go ahead and pray. I lay down my pride. I lay down my ambition. I lay down ministry. I lay down the quest for anointing. Is someone ready to surrender everything? Nevertheless, oh God, not my will. Nevertheless, oh God, not my will to build an empire. Not my will to do ministry. Your will be done. What you want is what I want. What you want is what I want. What you want is what I want. Regardless how I feel, I trust you. What you want is what I want. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Thy will be done in my life. 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 Your 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 will be done. 
You are praying. You are praying. I lay down everything, oh God. Everything. I hold back nothing from you. Kali parakas kedebeleketiada. Hello, him out of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him out of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, him out of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him out Thy kingdom come. hallelujah it's a prayer that i want you to take back home it's not a prayer that ends here it's a prayer that you take back to your place of prayer father i submit to your authority that everything you would have me do is what i will do i resist the pressure that comes from men i resist the pressure that comes to prove a point I am more interested in my submission to you, my relationship with you, than ambition, than a name, than an agenda. Let men call me a failure if my submission is intact, if my relationship is intact, I am satisfied. Hallelujah. Listen. I assure you that there are men and women that God is seeking. There is a build up to this glorious revival that has been prophesied even over this land. I have been saying this for many years that a mighty revival is coming to the east of the Niger. I believe that God has not been sending me for nothing. I have come like Elijah. I have come like John the Baptist to announce again. But it is not enough to know that a revival is coming. Bishop has been echoing this. And he has said that it is in his lifetime he will see this move of God. But hear me. One man's carelessness of disalignment can prolong the move of God. The nation of Israel were supposed to only spend 400 years. But the delay in Moses' training added 30 extra years. So you are going to leave tonight. I'm praying for you. But tomorrow we return here. Listen, I'd like you to see today and tomorrow like a retreat. Don't just go and start gisting and acting. No, no. Spiritualize your mentality. That from here tonight, you go back home and you listen to this message again. Go online and look for it. Listen to it once or twice and sit down in prayer. Lord, I'm part of this army. This battle axe that you are using. Lord, do not pass my family by. Do not pass me by. I am ready and I am willing. If you are looking for men of stamina in this end time, Lord, find an available vessel. I am willing to submit. I throw every agenda and everything that is antichrist. And I submit to you. And I pray for you. The grace that I'm about to pray upon you as we wrap up tonight is the grace for the secret place. Is the grace for hunger. Is the grace that sustains the power to bury ambition. The grace that can throw away ambition and say, Lord, 
if you want me to serve at the altar like Mordecai at the gates, I will stay there with honor. I'm not looking for anything except Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Yes, I will be glorified while I do that. But take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel. Nothing more When you're done Please take the glory I'm satisfied Just to see you glorified I'm Satisfied just to see you glorified I'm satisfied just to see you glorified in the name of Jesus Christ the Son of the Living God Father I pray over your precious people here gathered following online this grace that plans hunger this grace that plans passion for god passion to submit to his authority more than the empire building of men the desire to see jesus glorified more than the desire for fame the grace that decreases the flesh and increases the christ May that grace rest upon you now. Some of you as a result of this impartation, after this conference is done, that's when you will start your own retreat with God. Three days, two days of crying before God and say, take everything, oh God. I pray for you. Everything that has enthroned, that is enthroned in your heart above Christ, we dethrone it right now every idol of ministry idol of pride idol of lust idol of self-glorification idol of competition idol to be noticed above the revelation of jesus we dethrone those idols now in the name of jesus and i pray for you by reason of tonight's teaching, may you gain power with God. For many of you, as a result of this commitment tonight, you will go for your meetings and you will begin to see a new level of oil, a new level of grace, a new level of authority in the name of Jesus Christ. For like the centurion, you have made up your mind tonight to be consciously aligned under the authority of the Christ to wait upon him that you only do what he says to do you only go where he says to go you only say what he says to say I pray for you in the name of Jesus step into new levels of signs and wonders every mountain my friend oh dear we don't have the time i'm aware that you have your bikes are limited so we're going to be leaving now but we'll take our time to minister to people from the morning i will use both the morning and the evening to minister to people but this gentleman i want to pray for you just right where you are standing i saw oil coming on your head in the name of jesus christ may that grace rest upon you now let the fire from heaven rest upon you take that fire now in the name of jesus please help him you will drink of that wine and you will never thirst again the lord will begin to show you strange things in the name of jesus christ drink of that oil by the power that raised christ from the dead you will never be the same in the name of jesus christ and every mountain that has stood before you as a roadblock and will not let you pass you have used your faith to fight it and yet that mountain will not be lifted in the name of jesus i come by the apostolic and the prophetic tonight 
Makatos Skelede Salaskata Branda Gata Barusi Atakala Leketo Shketebre Skadibalal. Just help them. I'm praying. I'm rounding up now. Shariza Ziarakata. Mountains have been lifted now. Kreteska de Lekato Shabariata. My God, I'm just seeing doors opening. This is what I'm seeing. Paris Kete Paris Kotia. Just help them. Kerusa Ziakate Kotiaskata. Just one minute to minister to these people. Shadide Ketea. Everyone here that a door should have opened and that door has refused to open. I'm praying now. Kebaris Ketebe Deata. Shkadile Kebria. Shkodobregia. Doors and gates. Doors and gates. I come by the authority of heaven. Doors and gates. Kebetos Kebere Ketia Lahasha. Branda Gadaskida. Doors of testimonies. Doors of testimonies. Be open now. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open now. With understanding, you order the seasons. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light. Arranging the stars to your pleasing. My friend, that gentleman wearing a brown waistcoat, lift your hands up. Fire from heaven is coming upon you. Your life is about to change. Take that fire right now. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, power from heaven. I'm seeing you step into a level of speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is up. Let me pray the last prayer. Please do not miss tomorrow, whether the morning or the evening session. Do not miss it because I'm going to be praying for the sick and I'm going to be ministering to people. But I must pray and encircle some patterns of delay and also to release the grace for speed. Honestly, there is such a grace. Help those who begin to run by the anointing. Um, whether you are an usher or not, help them. This is usually what happens when we pray this grace for speed. Father, there are men and there are women here that desire this grace. You have brought them to bring acceleration to their lives. Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, may that grace for speed rest upon your life. One, my goodness. Two, three, take that grace. Take that grace. Speed to your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. People will begin to run by the anointing. Help them. Speed to ministry, speed to life, speed to your destiny in the name of Jesus. Take that grace. Some of you, your family, as a whole family, step into speed, step into speed, step into speed. As a family, you are representing your families. Altars of delay, I crush them now. Receive speed. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Kateka Kos Kate Branda Kata Bakotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.